Patricia. Um, I am driving out in the country. I'm heading out to do a home visit and the air is still terrible here, but I've got my little gas mask on because apparently I've got good filters in my car. I'm not sure. I feel like I can still smell the smoke. But um, anyway, I uh, was just on the phone for the last hour talking to the CABC about some credentialing stuff for the birthing center that I work at. And she had a lot of historical questions about my midwifery journey. And I thought that I would just talk about it a little bit more um, on here. So uh, I didn't know I wanted to be a midwife. I, my first career, I went to cosmetology school when I was in high school. And I worked in some hair salons for a while in uh, California and in Ohio. And then I played around with some other jobs and did this and did that. I was young, having fun. Followed the Grateful Dead around a bit, that kind of stuff. And then I, uh, um, let's see what happened next. Oh, I started working in the California Conservation Corps and I worked down the woods and I loved hiking. I loved working with chainsaws. <laughs> I loved working in the uh, rivers and the creeks. I, it was just so fun. I loved it. I loved living in the redwoods. I loved all the nature. I thought that that would actually be my forever life. I thought that I'd end up working for the Forest Service or something and just be out there, get a degree in biology or something and just stay out there. But <clears throat> I ended up getting pregnant and um, I was young. I was 21 when I got pregnant. I think, no, was I 21? I was 22 when I got pregnant. I had him when I was 22 as well. So, no, so I guess I was 21. Um, but I was young. I was really young. I just had to do a lot of like math from a long time ago because he's almost 25 now. So, uh, I um, ended up pregnant and I lived in the woods and I actually lived in some dorms up on the top of Requa Mountain. And it was, it overlooks the mouth of the Klamath River. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. And I didn't know what to do. I probably only known one person that had a baby ever before that. And they went to the hospital. And so I found an OB. And there were only two OBs in Crescent City at that time when I lived there. And so I went to the first one. I actually ended up going to both of them. I went to the first one. And I, I remember I didn't like him. He wasn't, he was kind of just busy and not very personable. I just didn't like him that much. But also like, I mean, I was like a hippie. I worked in the woods. My boyfriend had dreadlocks. I wore like hippie dresses. I probably didn't smell that great. I mean, I had a lot, of, a lot of things. I mean, we worked in the woods. We worked outdoors. We lived outdoors a lot of the times. And that was really just like a really normal lifestyle. We were, you know, conservationists and doing amazing, cool work. But I, um, Get, I had anemia and got a heart murmur when I was pregnant and I remember him asking me if I was on drugs and I was so offended. I was so shockingly offended. I'm still offended to this day about it because I had, I didn't drink soda, I didn't drink coffee, I didn't drink tea, I didn't eat like chocolate. I like stayed away from every stimulant ever right? I just didn't do any of that. And I was trying so hard to be healthy. Um, so ultimately I ended up transferring to uh, the other doctor in town. And by this point, the first doctor had given me the book, what to expect when you're expecting. And that book, not my favorite. I think a lot of people that work in the midwifery world have similar opinions to it. I mean, there's a lot of information in there. Yeah. But it just, the book scared the heck out of me. And I was like, what to expect to go wrong in my pregnancy? That's what I felt like I was reading about every chapter. And so in the conservation court, I had another friend that was there. Her name was Tracy and she was also pregnant. And she was, um, she lived in a trailer down, you know, south of us. And she was uh, gonna have her One baby. One mile, turn right onto Northeast Ribbon Sorry. Ridge Road. <laughs> she was gonna have her baby in a trailer down there with a midwife and she's like oh you should go to a midwife and at that point you know I just I was young and I didn't have anybody to really talk to we didn't have the internet <laughs> so perspective check I mean it existed but 
not for those kinds of things, you know? So, um, you couldn't do research on it and figure out where you wanted to have your baby or read birth stories or anything. But so she gave me spiritual midwifery and I read spiritual midwifery and I was just like, Oh my gosh, these people are like me. I got it. Like I loved that book so much. I ate it up so quickly and I was just like, I am going to have my baby in the squatting position. And I was like super set on that, right? Super set. And so I go, I transfer my care over to this other doctor. All right, onto Northeast Ribbon Ridge Road. Sorry. I go over and I uh, um, tell this doctor that uh, I want, or we have a meeting in his office. It's like my first appointment with him. And I tell him that I wanted, the like, first thing, I'm like, this is really important to me. Take a slight left turn onto Northeast North Valley Road. I told him it's really important to me that I can have my baby in the squatting position. I want to just have my baby squatting. And I remember him saying to me that he said, I'm not a mechanic. I'm not going to put my head on the floor to have for it so that you can have your baby. And this is like my first appointment with him. And there were, like I said, there's only two doctors in town. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I stuck with him and, um, ended up meeting a bunch of his nurses and one of them actually took the taught my childbirth classes and she had been a midwife in California and out of hospital midwife in California and so my childbirth class was very natural left birth. turn onto northeast north valley road no very natural birth oriented you know I like didn't even know I didn't even know I'm not kidding I didn't even know that epidurals existed <laughs> which cracks me up because I stopped reading what to expect when you're expecting and spiritual midwifery Before definitely didn't talk miles, about it. Take a slight left turn onto Northeast Flat Road. Um, so, so I, uh, I didn't even know. <laughs> and then, you know, there was a lot of great stuff she talked about. She was just so awesome and so natural minded and so wonderful. And me saying I wanted to have my baby squatting was not even like, she's like, great, honey, that'll be so great. And so went through the pregnancy. I mean, you know, I can, it's been so long. I can hardly even remember the prenatal care. I can only remember those classes. I don't remember what they taught. I just remember the way they made me feel. And, uh, that I didn't know about things that I guess other people know about. I just thought natural birth was just what everybody did. So that's what I did. <laughs> and uh, when I had my baby, it was like he came a few days early and I remember going into labor at home and <clears throat> trying to braid my hair while I was having contractions and it took me a very long time to put two braids in my hair. Cause that was one thing she said, braid your hair before your birth or it's gonna be a big tangly mess. So I remembered that. And then when I got to the hospital, it was like, you know, it was it was a long drive. We lived way out in the woods. We had to drive all the way through the redwoods in the middle of the night, through the windy roads. And I remember like opening my eyes once on the way and seeing this certain tree that looks like an octopus. And to this day, still when I drive through there, I see that tree and I'm like, oh, I so remember, I so remember this drive. But I got there and my nursing team, there was, the nurse that had taught my childbirth class. She had been a midwife in California and then she was a nurse now. And then there was a woman that had been a midwife in Mexico and she was a nurse now. And then there was a woman who had been a midwife in England and she was a nurse now. And so they all worked in the hospital. They stayed with me through my birth, all of them. Cause it was a little country hospital. I can't imagine there were many births happening in Crescent City right then, you know? So they like held me up into a squatting position and I gave birth to my baby squatting. And it, and I remember them like, they just praised me so much too. They're like, your birth is so beautiful. And this was such a beautiful experience. And oh, this is so wonderful. And you know, there was all of that. And I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And I remember from that moment, I left the hospital and I was like, I want to be a midwife. I didn't want to be a nurse. I didn't want to work in the woods anymore. I was just like instantly like, oh my gosh, I want to be a midwife. And that was 1995. So, um, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. It's uh, 1995 then and now it is 2020. <laughs> so that dates it a bit, huh? 
Um, that child's almost 25 years old. And I, a few months after his birth, moved up to Oregon and started studying midwifery. And um, it's been an amazing journey that there are a lot of details that go into that and all the choices that went around choosing teachers and choosing educational models and doing an apprenticeship and everything, the ins and outs of it. But it's just that birth, that birth changed my life and definitely um, made me become a midwife. So, and then I went on to have a home birth uh, four years later after studying midwifery for almost four years. So it's been a fun journey and uh, it's been fun to reflect on it today with somebody else. So it's funny when people ask me about it, I'll just talk and talk and talk because it's actually, it's, it's fun. It's a fun story. It's a fun way to realize how I came into who I was going to be, you know, who I am now. And who knows who I'll be, you know, in 20 years from now, 10 years from now, five years from now. But it's fun to watch, think of the journey now and realize that that's that my birth changed my path so drastically like I said I mean I worked in the woods and I loved my chainsaw <laughs> I loved it and I loved working doing the hard work that all the boys did I loved it it was so fun and I just really One thought mile. that that Take was a slight left turn onto northeast flat road I thought that that was the path and then that pregnancy and that birth just changed everything so there you go. There's a little piece of my story <laughs> while I'm on the road here driving through the most smoky, disgusting place ever. I'm pretty sure I have to put my mask back on because it's, um, it's bad out here. Um, we're in the middle of like massive forest fires in Oregon. It's, uh, I don't even know what day it is. September 18th or 19th of 2020 right now. So really bad, really bad out here. But anyhow, I'm off to do my midwife thing. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.